The flu season is upon us. Which type will we worry about this year? And what kind of shots will we be told to take? Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer that could spread across the nation. And Washington decided that every man, woman, and child in the nation should get a shot to prevent a nationwide outbreak, a pandemic. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. And now 4,000 Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars because of what happened when they took that shot. By far the greatest number of the claims, two-thirds of them, are for neurological damage or even death, allegedly triggered by the flu shot. We pick up the story back in 1976 when the threat posed by the swine flu virus seemed very real indeed. This virus was the cause of a pandemic in 1918 and 1919 that resulted in over half a million deaths in the United States, as well as 20 million deaths around the world. For 30 years, I've been warning people in my books and in every other way I can, that this world is controlled by a cult it's a cult that has no borders. It operates in all the at least major countries and in, in fact all the countries in the end and particular in those countries that dictate the direction of the world. So the cult will be at the core of the system in China. It will be at the core of the system in America, etc, etc, etc. And so what have I said in this 30 years that this cult wants? I've said, and we, I've said it in the chats we've had before, it wants to create a beyond Orwellian global state in which um, a tiny few people dictate to everyone else. I've referred to this as the Hunger Games Society. And you can picture the structure very clearly. Picture a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, you've got a tiny few enormously wealthy people that actually are um, connected to this cult. We now have a name for them. We call them the 1%. At the bottom of this pyramid in the Hunger Games Society is basically the rest of humanity that is dependent upon the 1%. And in between the two is a vicious, merciless police military state to impose the will of the 1% on the population and to prevent the population challenging the 1%. This matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to Should get this us, right. We, we, this matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to Should get this us, right. We, we, this matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to Should get this us, right. We, 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 this matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here. To get this right, we, we, uh, I'm going to back up and talk about what's happened eight days ago, today, and then the verification. My name is Dave Hodges. You're watching the Common Sense Show, and we are the show that is freeing America one enslaved mind at a time. All right. <laughs> this is kind of funny how it works out. A lady contacted me and we arranged for a phone conversation. I agreed not to disclose her area code where she worked. She was a nurse. We'll leave it at that. She said that when there was a cause of death, if there was any doubt, any doubt, and sometimes they didn't even do lab tests, she said they were told to put down the cause of death as coronavirus. And I thought, whoa, somebody wants to inflate this. I held on to it because, like I said, one tip, I didn't have double confirmation and she was too nebulous. I told her she could come on my show anonymously because she spoke like a surgical nurse. She knew all the terms. She had me down, and she sounded like I could believe her, but she was too skittish. She goes, I could be stripped of my credentials. Well, just this morning, 
I got information from a New York doctor, I can be that specific, who works at one of the hospitals. And I'm not going to give numbers because the numbers could pin back to his hospital. And I don't want those people to come under suspicion because they could be stripped of their medical licenses. But here's what he told me. He said that he had a patient and I can't, I should not mention the condition um, now that I think about it, because that could be traced to him too. Uh, but this patient had a condition other than Corona, clearly, no doubt, not respiratory, nothing involved in an entirely different part of the body than Corona's virus involves. He listed the cause of death. Someone came over and countermanded that and overrode it and put down coronavirus. And he was like, holy crap. So he began to look at numbers. And what he found was a good majority of the deaths in this hospital that were not due to corona, minority, extreme minority, were being falsely labeled as coronavirus. He found two instances of this where he was able to come across this. And you don't know the gender of the doctor. I'm saying he, for convenience reasons, it could be a he, she, or an it. I'm being vague because I don't want to endanger the person. I offered for them to come on my show anonymously. And again, they refused and I understand why they did. So I'm sitting here and I'm talking to Mike Adams and Steve Quayle and my other contacts today, Paul Martin. And I says, man, I said, I think this is real. I said, I've got two highly intelligent people talking to me. And by the way, a third party brought this uh, second case to me, a third party known to me which I'm not going to identify. So I've got all these unidentifiers, but consistency. And I can see the reason why they're doing it. So here I'm left with a real quandary. I can't go forward and report this. Not, not in that form. But lo and behold, I wrote it up. Potential release. My head said, tell me, Dave, I'll run it. I think you got enough. I didn't think I did. Not going back on my old research protocols from my training. But lo and behold, this afternoon, I discovered that Stanford University came out and said the cases of coronavirus are being over-exaggerated to a great magnitude. Great magnitude is a quote. Just so happens, up on Steve Quayle's website, you will find that article. Howdy, folks. I'm Phil Hudock, and this is March 29th, 2020. This is an update that I've promised, and um, probably before I'm done, it'll be March 30th, 2020, because this is late Sunday night. I've kind of had a hard time putting this presentation together because so much is happening. Uh, I haven't felt comfortable ex with exactly what it is that I need to cover. But I've titled this Flu and Vaccines, Pandemics and COVID-19, Known and Unknown. Uh, hopefully you have your spiritual life in order, and I'll probably get into that at the conclusion of this update. Because if you're not, with everything that's going on, you're going to be tossed to and fro. You're going to be bothered, bewildered, and bewitched. Um, because it's just mind-boggling what is going on. Now, I've said this is called known and unknown. And for those of you who are tuning in and are opt-ins, you're aware of the arbitration award and the contract that's established by the arbitration award. And I consider this, this is a known, this is a lawful, legal, arbitration award that establishes a contract that was done on behalf of all American people. And that is a known. It exists. It, it just needs to be uh, implemented. Uh, we need settlement with the government for the implementation of this award in the contract. That's a known. A second known is that we have a situation of mass hysteria because of the corona or COVID-19 virus. 
and that has put a temporary halt on the implementation of this permanent injunction order. So um, I'm going to talk about some things tonight. I'm going to bring you some information. Uh, some of it I have produced and I stand by it. Some of it is just for your information. Um, you know, God gave you a brain, use it. You know, we make decisions um, in different ways. Sometimes we let feelings uh, determine our decisions, uh, rational thought, um, our faith. A lot of uh, decisions uh, are determined by faith, and everyone has faith in something, whether it be uh, the Creator, Jesus, or themselves, or the government, Uncle Sam, um, a political system, socialism, uh, capitalism, uh, you know, those, those are all ways that people make decisions. So uh, some of the information I'm going to give you, uh, I believe, is solid information. Uh, many of the links that I have a, on a page called Previous Vaccine Info Links, uh, which go back over 11 years. Uh, these things I put on the internet, and I'll get to those in a minute. Also, I have another page on the internet um, on my website, hudoc.info, and I call these breaking information links, and um, I'll explain those later. So, uh, the, the pandemic the concerns about the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, this information involves questions such as, what is it? Who's in control? What is the objective? And so I'm, I'm going to bring to you some history. Uh, we must look at history. It's been said those who do not learn from history are, are doomed to repeat it. So, um, you have you make decisions all the time <laughs> even if you um, decide not to make a decision that in itself is a decision <laughs> for instance uh, have you ever uh, thought about not thinking about anything so that you can go to sleep well you just made a decision to not think about anything um, and how well did it work for you <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to turn off um, our brain and uh, and decisions are being made all the time. Now, uh, like I said, you can use feelings, uh, reasoning, and faith. And uh, I want to look at just decision making in general. It's important. Um, we're in a time now where people are making decisions and it I think it goes along with this pandemic um, based on feelings. And, and while feelings has its place, uh, it is uh, most dangerous when the prime motiva motivation or prime motiva motivator um, is fear. And then you usually tend to make irrational and um, decisions uh, that are just uh, totally irrational and against, um, in my case, it would be against my faith to let fear control me. Uh, as the Bible says, fear is not of the Lord. So if you're fearful, uh, you probably have some spiritual um, problem. Uh, concern is one thing. But being motivated by fear is is not good. Okay, uh, so the concern and fear are two different things. Just like reflex and reaction, um, uh, responding and reflex are two different things. Response is calculated. Reflex is just knee jerk. Um, so 
anyway, you know, fear can send uh, a, a country, um, or, or even as we see, uh, the majority of the world's population into turmoil. Uh, uh, even wars uh, are mainly started by fear, and in the United States we've had 17 unconstitutional wars since 1950. Uh, that's more than 85 percent of the last 70 years. I'm 70 years old and uh, those fears I think that were used to facilitate those wars wars were um, the result of uh, people who, who were greedy um, and wanted control. And what is more important for a country to do than to go to war? And yet, in my life, there has not been a constitutional war. And personally, I think when uh, another's life is taken in opposition to the rule of law, which in this case, the Supreme uh, rule of law is the Constitution, uh, that's lawlessness. It could even be considered murder when you don't obey your own laws. So, you know, that's one of the reasons for uh, the Bill of Peace and the Arbitration Award, and that is that the government has not stuck to the contract. Uh, they've broken the contract, and another contract has been established. So, in this information, um, for instance, uh, the breaking information links, you're going to find some, and, and we're talking about vaccinations and pharmaceuticals and things that are very important and in the news right now. But you're going to see information uh, that I put on the internet over the last 11 years that shows that Bayer, the corporation Bayer, knowingly distributed contaminated factor eight blood, factor eight blood products to France and other foreign countries, knowingly. You're gonna see that the Merck head vaccine researcher Maurice Hillman admits that there were cancer viruses uh, in their vaccines and that these viruses uh, were in vaccines that were distributed to the Russians and you'll actually hear Maurice uh, laugh when saying that the Russians probably won't do very well in the upcoming Olympics because their bodies will be riddled with tumors from these vaccines from the Merck pharmaceutical company. It's different. I, I don't know why to tell you this, but I've been around biology a long time. I just think this virus may have some long-term effects. Mm -hmm. And he said, what? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I love it. Go ahead. Yeah. No. I said, Albert, I said, I, you, you probably think I'm nuts, but I just have that feeling. Well, in the meantime, we had taken this virus and put it into monkey and into hamsters. Uh-huh. So we had this meeting, and that was sort of the topic of the day, and the jokes that were going around was, gee, we would win the Olympics because uh, the Russians would all be loaded down with tumors. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the vaccine was being tested. This was this was yeah, right. Anderson. Right. So, uh, and it really destroyed the meeting. Right? You know, it was a big event. Yeah, right. And so it was sort of a topic. You know. uh, I just can't imagine a person with that with that lack of humanity to laugh at other people's medical calamities that he knew existed. Or even if he didn't know it existed, but he laughs about it 
in retrospect as just unbelievable. Um, you'll find out um, other things. I, I've been researching vaccinations uh, for a long time. I, you know, I'm not uh, a doctor. I did teach science for over 40 some years and I became involved in uh, a vaccine battle here in West Virginia. West Virginia happens to be one of the states that has no uh, philosophical um, or religious uh, reasons uh, not to, to take vaccines. It's one of the few states that has no religious or philosophical exemptions. When I looked into autism, when I found out what they did to Dr. Andrew Wakefield, who established a relationship between vaccines and autism, and when I saw what happened to him, um, and the witnessing of the uh, burgeoning rate of autism in, in public schools, um, I became very concerned. And what really woke me up was uh, viewing the 60 Minutes uh, program by Mike Wallace where he interviews many people, including the head of the CDC, makes him look like a total idiot. Uh, it was called the 1976 swine flu hoax, which I posted in uh, 2000 nine on YouTube and YouTube took it down and I've reposted it and it has over 7,000 views and if you haven't seen it considering what's going on I suggest uh, that you go to uh, previous vaccine info links and uh, it's uh, looks like it's the 12th thing 12th link that's posted on the website whodoc.info there were things that I found out that just uh, shocked me um, when I found out that, that Baxter patented the 2009 uh, swine flu vaccine a year before the swine flu pandemic, which turned out to be a real farce. Um, again, I'm scratching my head. It's like, wait a minute. They have a vaccine for that very flu, which originated a year later. And when several of my students who had the flu and came back to school and I questioned them uh, because they had gone to a health clinic and I said, well, what did they tell you? Which flu, did you have the regular flu? Or did you have the swine flu? And now the swine flu at first was horrible, supposedly. And later it was, well, you'd actually rather have the swine flu. It wasn't quite as bad as the regular flu. But at any rate, when I asked these students, what did you find out at the health clinic? Was it the swine flu or the regular flu? They told me that the health care worker told them that they weren't going to test anymore, but it was just going to be um, labeled and recorded as the swine flu. What? In other words, they were instructed to record invented data. And when I brought up the, I, the fact that um, the swine flu vaccine had been patented a year before, I was actually threatened, um, a parent uh, went to the principal, didn't threaten me directly, but went to the principal and, and threatened the school for me telling that. And I had to explain to the principal, uh, that's true, you know, truth is truth. So at any rate, uh, and then in 2013, my youngest daughter uh, refused to take a newly mandated vaccine because of a vaccine policy, not a law. Um, and she
she was not permitted to attend school her senior year. Uh, fortunately, I tied up the situation in court and the uh, judge ruled that the county had to provide instruction for my daughter, homebound instruction, and she got to graduate with her graduating class um, and she was valedictorian and got to give her valedictorian speech. And that is also, I think, posted on the website. Yeah, total immunity vaccination, getting yours, question mark. Um, and I put that up in October of last year. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So, even though in the civil sense, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, anything that is contrary to God's laws is null and void, really. Okay, we don't need, we in this country have not even been taught our true history and how the Bible was held up when a judge entered the courtroom and that's what people stood for. They stood for the ultimate law book, the Bible. Now, they stand for the man. He doesn't bring the Bible in. Getting back to the arbitration award, which, which signifies or um, acknowledges that our rights come from God and that that is where our true responsibility is. Uh, that our blessings, I should say, come from God and they come with responsibility. So, you know, looking at this, this vaccine policy that my daughter refused to take, it was a policy, it wasn't a law. And see, our country, it used to be you could not be penalized, you could not be fined, imprisoned, and she would thre threaten with arrest uh, of trespassing if she went to school by not getting those booster shots, okay, which weren't law. Again, it was policy. But just where are we in this country? Um, what does COVID-19, what's it all about? Well, uh, I'm going to take a closer look at what's posted for you. This is information for you, for you to make your own decisions. Don't, uh, you know, listen to me, but God gave you a brain. Use it and make your own decisions, okay? Too many people now let the government decide pretty much everything about their life. And they go to the government for pretty much permission for everything they do. Um, there's something really wrong with that picture. Anyway, um, going back to uh, the first page, which I call Previous Vaccine Information Links, there are 12 links. The first five are titled Eugenics, Vaccination, IBM, The Connection. And there are five parts. Watch that. Very important. Eugenics, vaccinations, IBM, the connection in five parts. Uh, the second five in on that page is called vaccinations dash eugenics on steroids. And I actually did this series twice and I call this volume two. It's also five parts and these are I think important YouTube videos some of which I produced others that I um, put together and posted um, have been on YouTube since uh, for 11 years. Uh, the next thing is about um, uh, the situation of vaccination, forced vaccination that I, I mentioned. And the last one is the 60 Minutes video uh, on 
the swine flu from 1976. Okay, the other page, which has links, titled Breaking Information Links, and there's a uh, paragraph, uh, a preface, uh, a paragraph, paragraph on each one of those. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll read this, the second paragraph. Uh, you can read the first one for the first page. The following links offer differing opinions of which I am quite, of which I am in quite differing levels of agreement and some in no agreement whatsoever. So some of these um, I agree with totally, some eh, I'm not sure, others uh, I don't think are right, but I'm just putting it out there for your information so you can decide. Uh, the globalist deep state wants everyone in lockstep conditioned groupthink. Okay, lockstep conditioned groupthink, which is the exact opposite of free will, choice, and responsibility. I personally operate on convictions, not feelings, and not the lesser of two evils. So you know, if 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 someone is pro-abortion pro-killing of innocent, the taking of innocent blood. I don't care what else, what else uh, is in their platform. I'm not going to go for it. No way. Okay? Because evil is evil. And I'm not going to condone evil. A Bill of Peace 2020 rule of law and free will choice that it represents has been for me an education and work in progress. For others, I hope it provides the same. The first uh, video uh, is one that I posted. It's called Pompeo Live Exercise. Uh, please watch that. Um, I don't know what to make of it. Pompeo says that the COVID-19 pandemic, um, or at least their um, reaction to it, that it's a live exercise. And President Trump is heard to say, This matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to get this right we, we I really don't totally know what to make of it uh, the second video is by Dave Hod Dave Hodges it concerns some very disturbing information that he's received that death uh, reports or records I'm not sure exactly whether it's just the reports that go out to the media um, or whether it's actually um, the uh, death certificates are being faked, uh, that, that, these, that some people have died from the coronavirus. He researched it and went to Stanford University, and they're saying there is this problem. Well, hey, does it not go back to the healthcare workers telling my students that, well, uh, we're just going to say it's the swine flu. Hmm. You know, you wouldn't say that to the media, but they said that to their student, to my students. Uh, probably thinking that it, you know, it, it wouldn't register or it wouldn't get out where it shouldn't. Uh, but these healthcare workers who have confided in to Dave Hodges that, that these records are being faked. Um, they're telling him, hey, if this gets out, I'm fired. Um, well, hey, I found out that the American Dental Association um, holds the patent for mercury fillings and that a dentist, if he says there could be a problem with mercury fillings, and my dentist told me this, he could lose his license because he signed an agreement with the American Dental Association 
to be certified by them, and they hold the patent. Kind of a conflict of interest, isn't it? And to think that these vaccine companies have been given immunity and government workers have been given immunity for any liability of vaccine damage. So, you know, think people. This, this information is for you. Uh, uh, the third is David Icke, analysis of the globalist endgame. 10 minute video. Uh, here's, here's a biggie. Uh, it's titled, it's an article from the New England Journal of Medicine titled COVID-19 Navigating the Uncharted. I'm going to read a, a quote in this paper in the New England Journal of Medicine of which Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is head of the CDC, uh, is one of the three co-authors. Here's a quote. This is concerning the coronavirus threat. Quote, one assumes that the number of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic cases is several times as high as the number of reported cases the case fatality rate may be considerably less than 1%. The case fatality may be considerably less than 1%. This suggests that the overall clinical consequences of COVID-19 may ultimately be more akin to those of a severe seasonal influenza, parentheses, which has a case fatality rate of approximately 0.1% or a pandemic influenza similar to those of uh, 1957 and 1968. Rather, okay, so, it, so COVID may ultimately be more like the seasonal influenza rather than a disease similar to SARS or MERS which had a case fatality rate of 9 to 10 and 36 percent respectively. So this is in the New England Journal of Medicine and this is co-authored by Anthony Fauci and it's saying that COVID-19 may ultimately be more akin to those of a severe seasonal influenza. Whoa. Okay. That is on the website. That is the uh, fourth thing with the link to the New England Journal of Medicine. So check it out. Don't trust me. Do your own research. Make your own decisions. You know, God gave us all brains. I have a couple more uh, videos. One is called Praying Medic. Medic. Um, and it's entitled, it's titled, Meet Your New Fed Chair, Donald Trump, about 14 minutes long. Again, I just present this for your information. You take a look at it. You decide. Um, the next thing is an article from 2018, December, I think it's 4th, 2018, where Italy, in December, on December 4th, 2018, that's a little over a year ago, sacked its entire health expert board because the Italian government had decided that the health uh, expert health board was pushing vaccines, which they uh, felt uncomfortable about, um, because uh, they weren't buying the hype that vaccines are so great and they're, uh, the whole vaccine mystique, you know, there was a problem in Italy and they fired the entire expert board of over 100 people. And I just find this interesting in that it's Italy that is having 
uh, more problems of, than any other country, a higher fatality rate, it's like, wait a minute, they went against vaccination and they're suffering more than just about any other country, definitely more than any country in Europe. China, we're not sure. Um, but, you know, again, who profits and retaliation and, you know, you got to think about these things. Motive, you know, why? The next is a article and a video uh, titled Power Grab, the National Plan to Vaccinate Every American. Uh, you know, what we know that the financial effects of this pandemic or quote pandemic are going to be monumental and there are a lot of people who believe that the uh, effects are going to be worse you know the treatment is going to be worse than the disease uh, there's a market report by Gregory, Gregory Manorino about the financial effect, which I just mentioned. A video titled QAnon, a scripted movie, Nothing is What It Seems. Well, I believe that. Uh, how much is what it really seems? Maybe nothing. <laughs> All right, Steve Bannon makes a bold prediction about Trump's coronavirus next steps. Uh, Gerald Salente, two videos by him um, on the economic panic. Again, it's it's real. <laughs> we we know that's real, and it's going to, going to get worse. Uh, Dave Hodges, a video called "The Wheels Are Coming Off the Supply Chain." Um, that's going to be monumental if if this continues. Uh, if we continue down the road we're going, what happens? when the supplies aren't there. They can't even be delivered regardless of whether truckers are trucking because we're dependent on um, other concerns, other areas of the economy and other countries for that matter. Uh, look how we're dependent on China for our pharmaceuticals. Crazy, nuts. So hopefully we're learning something, uh, but these kind of things are, are being, you know, uh, brought to our attention now. Oh, here's an interesting, the last one, FDIC Chairman Jelena McWilliams asks Americans to keep their money in the banks. And so this is a, a simple one minute video produced by the FDIC saying, don't worry, um, you will be okay with your money in a FDIC insured bank. Well, um, I guess, yeah, if the government goes, we're in deep trouble. And, you know, that's one uh, reason why I always point out with this arbitration award, this is not designed to bring the country down. This is designed to have the, the government see that there are over 3,000 whistleblowers who are saying there's a problem you need to fix this okay you know give us a contract we can uh, enter into don't break the contract on your end and say we're supposed to keep the contract on our end that's not how contracts work okay all right now uh, I mentioned in the beginning that you must have your spiritual life in order and um, I uh, quoted Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Um, and in truth, only truth will set you free. For years I had a um, a cable access show which was Christian news and views and I called it prove all things okay from the from the scripture um, but I want to point out something this is Ecclesiastes 118 
and it says, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Uh, this is such a crazy time, and people are being fed hype 24 hours a day, radio, TV. Um, they're stuck in their homes. Um, they don't have uh, some of the um, diversions and escapes that they normally have. And so uh, I want to address this, uh, this sorrow and this grief that people are experiencing and stress that concern is understandable and it is acceptable to God. But fear and um, being overwhelmed by, by grief and sorrow. In other words, yes, sorrow increases. And, you know, and it says, um, if the foundations be destroyed, what, what can the righteous do? Uh, yeah, but our trust is in the Lord. Our future is in the hereafter. This is temporary. And I, I, I was led to that Ecclesiastes 1.18 verse. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. But what do you do about it? Why does the Lord tell us that this happens? And to expect it, but to be able to deal with it. And I was led to a book that I have called Matthew Henry's Commentaries. And I thought, you know, I want to look at this verse and see what his comments are on it and share it with you people because I think it's important um, I just feel led to do that I feel can uh, have a conviction to do that <laughs> and the amazing thing is uh, you've heard of uh, uh, serendipity okay the term serendipity is just you know defying odds the odds of uh, happening, but it happens anyway. Well, anyway, I this this book has uh, 1,986 pages, and I picked up this book. I opened it up, and before I actually looked at where I'd opened it, kind of like in the middle, I had this feeling, this thought, and I don't know how long the thought was in my brain. It had to be for less than a second, maybe a millisecond. I don't know. I don't know how long thoughts take, especially when you're not thinking in words, but it's just a pure thought, okay? You're not, like, expressing it in your mind in words. And I thought, I wonder if I'll open this to the scripture I'm looking for. And I did. Out of 1,986 pages, I opened it to Ecclesiastes 1.18. And I want to read the commentary, because I think it's important, okay? <sighs> Quote, and this is about that very <clears throat> verse, at the 18th verse <clears throat> in chapter 1. Let me get a drink here. Quote, Those that increase knowledge have so much more the quick and sensible perception of the calamities of this world. Let us not therefore be driven off from the pursuit of any useful knowledge, but put on patience to break through the sorrow of it. But let us despair of finding true happiness in this knowledge and expect it only in the knowledge of God and the careful discharge of our duty to Him. So they're saying, um, because of the calamities of this world, 
you know, you're going to perceive this, um, and there's going to be sorrow. But you find true happiness. Um, you know, do do not despair of finding true happiness in this knowledge, and expect it only in the knowledge of God, and the careful discharge of our duty to Him. Okay, it, it it puts much more meaning into that into that. And then I went back through and I read the commentary preceding the actual verse, and I and I want to read that too. Solomon, especially perceived that the knowledge of wisdom and folly was the vexation of spirit. It vexed him to see that many that had wisdom not use it. In other words, they they were vexed and so they didn't use the wisdom. So in in much wisdom there is grief, but that doesn't mean that you don't want the wisdom. It's just you gotta deal with it, okay? Um, he found that when he got some knowledge he could neither gain that satisfaction to himself nor do that good to others with it which he expected. So he he found that uh, he wasn't satisfied in what he could do and he he, um, he didn't get what he expected in helping other people with this, handle this knowledge. The minds and manners of men are crooked and perverse. We are fallible. And we gotta admit that. We gotta understand that we're weak and we need God in everything. <laughs> Not just during a pandemic, a real one, or a perceived one, or whatever comes our way um, you know we are sheep we need the shepherd um, we need the creator Solomon thought with his wisdom and power together thoroughly to reform his kingdom but he was disappointed all the philosophy and politics in the world will not restore the corrupt nature of man Learning will not alter men's natural tempers, nor cure them of their simple distempers. That which is wanting in our knowledge is so much that it cannot be numbered. The more we know, the more we see of our own ignorance. Upon the whole, therefore, he concluded that great scholars do but make themselves great mourners. For in much wisdom is much grief. Now, what's the good news? Um, the good news is based on faith, which is based on trust, trusting the Lord, having faith in the Lord. So I have two, four, six, seven verses that um, I want to share. <laughs> Again, because I think it's important at this time, more than any other time in my life, uh, I see this as important to uh, everyone, um, myself included, because we all battle uh, fear, we have to control it, we have to put our trust in God, we have to direct our attention, and uh, we have to be led by God and the Holy Spirit. and what scripture tells us. So, Psalms 34, 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Okay. Psalm 84, 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Psalms 21, 7. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. We can we can trust and put our faith in him. He, he's, he's not going to be moved. He's not going to fail us. 
Psalms 32.10 Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy, mercy shall compass him about. Jeremiah 17.5 Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. That's a powerful verse. Don't put your trust in man. Proverbs 16.20 He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Wow. He, he that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. That's We have a matter here. We have matters all the time. But I'm speaking specifically of the pandemic. That's a matter. Um, it has to be handled wisely. And if it is, he that do with that shall find good and whoso trusteth in the Lord happy is he Jeremiah 17 7 blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is so those are wonderful things <laughs> things for your soul things for your psyche things for your uh, emotional state, things for your uh, your immunity. <laughs> okay. Um, one more thing I want to close with. I, I hope this has been profitable. I, uh, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The uh, last thing here, reminder: government agencies have yet to answer a four-year request for private law 114-31 December 3rd 2016 that is known to exist okay this uh, there has been the serving of a four-year request to numerous people and numerous agencies it's going to be very interesting we know this exists and it speaks volumes as to what um, the American government has been up to longer than uh, most of us have been alive and it needs to be revealed so uh, that's that's going to be interesting how they're going to handle this okay it's a private law it's uh, remedy and relief very similar to the arbitration award and the contract that it establishes uh, called Bill of Peace or Treaty of Peace. Uh, so, anyway, uh, God bless you folks. Uh, please go to the website. Um, take everything the way it should be taken. Do your own research. Make up your own mind. Trust in the Lord. Uh, the Lord is good, and He will not fail us. So, God bless.